know how to do this? Or better yet, want to learn how to do this? Of course you do. Okay, Kung Fu Chronicles, we are back and I know what you're thinking. This is something completely new. Strong high fat choy. I thought with a new lunar year, year of the ox, it'd be great to start a new segment. Upgrade. So really quick, if you're brand new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe below, hit the little bell. You'll be up to date on all the notifications as soon as I post new videos. And follow me on all my social media right here. That way you'll get all the behind the scenes stuff on everything that we've got planned for the channel. Usually we're doing our interview segments, five crucial questions, two quick questions, couple spotlights. But once in a while I get some comments on, hey, how do you do this? Or what's the technique for that? And well, I may not be a super expert in everything. Well, tell us something we don't know, motherfucker. <laughs> After 20 years of martial arts kung fu experience, I got a little know-how here and there. So I figured why not do something just for you guys. Welcome to the new segment, it's called How To's For You. We're going to talk techniques, how to do them, and of course how to get better at them. I thought I'd start things off simply with weapons because I love them and why not start with the most simplest of them. The saber, dough, or just plain sword, machete, whatever you want to call it. And why not? I love weapons, you love weapons, so let's do it. Okay, a couple basics with the saber or the dough. First of all, it's a one side bladed weapon, meaning here's my cutting side, here's my blunt side for blocking. Cuts come from up under, blocking comes from on top. When I ward off or cut, I'm using this side to block, push down. This is not the sharp end. By the way, for more info on all of the 18 traditional Kung Fu weapons, I'll leave a link up here. I did a video earlier about that, which breaks down all of the weapons and their multiple uses. Okay, so let's start with the upward flower. Okay, upward versus cutting, flowering, lower. We're just going to do upward for this segment. All right, so my upward motion, if you'll notice, it's just in the basic pattern of an X. I'm going to use an imaginary box here as my frame and I'm cutting upwards towards the opponent, towards the enemy, blocking or cutting up. Let's talk the handle on the weapon. Placement. I've got a little bit of space in between my handle here and here. It's not meant to be a two-handed weapon, although some are long enough to hold with two hands, this is meant to be used as a one-handed weapon. Old school China weaponry, you'd have a shield in one hand, your sword in the other, and that's how soldiers would fight. This is basically a Chinese machete. So, for purposes of the video, let's talk our upward flower motion. Imagine my shield were in the other hand. With that reckoning, if I'm cutting up, I'm cutting, I'm slicing, I'm blocking or cutting, and usually this would be a cutting motion here. So if I'm cutting up at an opponent, it would be at this angle. Or from this position, this angle. This position, this angle. So here's my cuts or my blocks, all right? To achieve this, last tip I'll give you guys to make this really simple, think of a figure eight. I'm going to keep my hand not super tight because then it becomes blocky. I'm gonna keep this rather loose, meaning I'll have these last three fingers towards the bottom of the sword and these top two kind of loose. That helps me keep my figure eight motion and keep the motion fluid so that it doesn't become choppy or blocky. The sword has room to maneuver, but I don't keep it so loose that if someone hit me or hit my hand, the sword would fall out, if that makes sense. The pattern without the sword as you can see, is basically here, here. So forming a figure eight, this would be my pattern for my upward striking, slashing. Figure eight, from this angle, figure eight. If you notice, I keep a stance, I keep a nice arrow stance because in all of our forms, this is usually the stance that you'll be cutting with if you were in this position. Technically fighting from a fighting position. If you were here, you'd still want stability so you could hold the, the sword, have uh, some foundation and start cutting up upward. So it only makes sense to be in some sort of stance like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll just use this as the model, okay? So once again, my figure eight going up towards the sky and back. So cut one, cut one, cut two, cut one, cut two. X pattern again, X marks the spot if you like right. from this angle. One side, two side, one side, two side, one side, two side. From the front, one side, two side, one side, two side, one side, two side, one side, two side. 
It's important to visualize an actual opponent. So when I'm doing things like weapons, I always visualize doing actual striking. If I don't have an object to use to cut, I'll just visualize. So my opponent, my imaginary opponent's in front. I'm cutting up, upwards, towards the groin, towards the gut, towards the leg, whatever makes sense. As I'm coming up, the wrist comes over, cutting up, the wrist comes over, going down. Each time you'll notice, I keep this pattern of figure eight for my wrist to stay loose. As I cut, I also try to keep my elbow in, but as I come up so that I can have some stability, as I come outwards, that's when my arm's gonna straighten for the cut that comes underneath. One side, two side. One side, two side. Remember, in good weapon practice, the weapon is just an extension of your body. So the more I extend with the sword, the more effective my cuts will be. One more time from this side. One side, two side. One side, two side. People will ask, what are we doing with the other hand? Don't leave a dead hand, because technically, even if you had a sword, you would want it mobile and moving. So use this other hand as a guide. As I come up, this hand guides, this hand guides, this hand guides. Also, just in case the sword gets knocked, you've got a backup. One set up, two set up, and the other hand will flower in that same figure eight. One side cut, two side cut, one. Okay, all right, once you've got that down, go ahead and practice. Remember, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. There's no shame in going slow at first. This is of course how we learn. If you're brand new to Sabre, this is a great way to start. If this video was at all helpful to you guys, let me know below in the comments. If you'd like to see more, tell me what you'd like to see and we'll do our best to accommodate. Next time we'll do the downward flowering pattern so you guys can connect the two. And then from there, we can start talking about some flowering patterns that connect and form practice and what happens. Okay guys, so if you liked what you saw, of course, smash that like button down below. Share, share, share. Of course, that's how we grow. Follow me on my social media. We'll have a lot of behind the scenes stuff and hopefully of course keep you up to date on what's yet to come and check out a few other videos you may like while you're here guys stay safe see you in the next round and keep cutting